Hey everybody, Jamie here from the Enigmatic Nomadics YouTube channel. Haven't posted in a few weeks. I've got a lot of footage. I've been busy, but I haven't edited it. Things have been coming up that I've been working on projects uh, other than uploading to YouTube. So I wanted to get something out. About four or five days ago, Aaron, who went down to, uh, or up to Chico with me, was out four wheeling in her truck with a camper van on top of it and broke it. To be fair, it probably had some dry rot or it did have some dry rot and the frame was really rusty. Anyway, she just stressed it out more than it can handle and it broke. And she had to get another slide in camper really fast. And I don't know, I've never researched it, but evidently it's, they're hard to find. And she had a really nice solar system on it that uh, Larry had uh, installed. And so she sent me a text, asked me if I would come to Cottonwood and harvest the old, the equipment off the old rig come up, put it on the new rig. She has uh, jobs that she gets where she has to work on the internet. And so she's a digital nomad and she can't be without power. So I rode the motorcycle down, took the equipment off and came back up here and I'm putting it back on now. I probably still have a couple of more days on it and then I'll get to editing the video that I've been, uh, that I've been filming. Here's her rig now, we've got the two panels flanking a uh, skylight and a fantastic fan and i'm working on the inside right now so with that it's i'll probably have a few more days getting this in and then my intention is to get on to editing videos and talking about the van build because i've never had so much energy and questions about the van build as i uh, as i have this year in july i usually don't even start talking about the van build until late september early october but as it stands right now We've already got over 100 people signed up, either as volunteers or people that want to have work done. Uh, if you want to know information about the van build, it's going to be November 8th, same time, same place as last year. It runs about 16 days, and you can go to enigmaticnomadics.com to sign up, learn more about it, find out what it's all about. Basically, it's a deal where you come bring the equipment and me and volunteers will install it for you at no cost on the labor. And anyway, that's, that's the quick synopsis of it. I'm gonna get back to this install. Let's take a look at some of the things that uh, we've been up to over the last couple of days. Let's take a look. We got the MC4 wire, a couple of breakers, the good ones. And then we just need to get some Cat 3 kind of like foam cord that we weren't able to harvest off of her old rig uh, yesterday. So we're gonna head over to probably Home Depot. We have the cords to replace for the remote to the inverter and the battery monitoring system, the Victron battery monitoring system that we weren't able to save. We're gonna go with a heavy cord from the inverter to the, kind of the converter on the rig to tap in all the outlets so all the outlets work when we get the inverter in. This plug we're gonna change. We're just about running out of stuff to do before we have to go work, so let's go. I think the goal today should be that we mount the panels on the roof, like we talked about, and bring the cables in. So as far as we get today, at least tomorrow when, when we uh, start the day, the all the outside work will be done. and. We're going to then probably the next thing to do would be to take this refrigerator out because you're going to be replacing it anyway and the wires are going to come in behind it. I think I, I swap out your solar controller for the Victron and leave it at that place. But we have to decide where we want to put these Battleborn batteries and we have to decide where that big old honking inverter is going to go. What do you think about that idea? There's not a lot of room. I mean, if we do, I mean, I'm just, I haven't seen it to know what I'm talking about yet, but if we, the inverter's gotta be close to the batteries. One nice thing about those Battleborns is they don't care if they're right side up, upside down. So if we could stack them in here, then that's a home for them. What's this? thing is this a water jug that's the battery there's one battery in this plastic thing yeah so it was probably a lead acid flooded battery that outgassed and they had to make an enclosure for it 
so this is our battery bank and this is our inverter bank and you know with the inverter in here it's gonna have to stay cool I don't know how, how hot it's gonna get but it needs to circulating around it but this is where the so we're gonna pull so I'm gonna mount the panels today pull the fridge pull this old battery container and this is where it, all the magic's gonna happen and it would be very easy at that point to run a 110 line in to your junction and fire up all the outlets you don't have any outlets no right here one fire up that outlet and this outlet and this okay. outlet which i think we ought to change over to the one with the usb mm -hmm. no yeah how about we change this one over to the usb well that's a gfi but it's just a gfi because there's a sink right here if we change it over to the usb that gives you a countertop to set your phone yeah. Otherwise, okay. your phone's going to sit on the ground. Okay. See what I'm saying? That's weird. All right. Sounds like we have a plan to get started. Where am I going to put my clothes? Because there's, like, no room in here. Well, Look, I, there's, seriously. There's no, this closet has no room. Hey, you picked the sliding camper. <laughs> That's true. I like to go where I want to go. Um... I, really, That's I don't the think, clothing closet. Yeah, really, I don't think that we're going to take up that much more space in here than what this is already doing. But if your clothes are laid up against that inverter and that inverter gets warm over time, mm -hmm. I don't think it's a fire hazard. I think it's just going to shorten the life of the inverter over time. Can we put the inverter in here? No, I don't think so. And put the batteries there? Is that too long of a run? It's not too long of a run. I could try to do that and just take that converter completely out. Yeah, because you know what? There's a vent right here. Yeah, the vent would come out so I could reach in. I mean, it's very possible we could do that. And maybe we could put the battle borns in the lower cabinet there. And then I'd have one in that cabinet. Because then I'd have one cabinet for clothes. And they would. And then just put pull all that the, out? Yeah, put all the electronics in there. We'll you maybe even put the inverter in there. We'll there. see if they can fit. The only thing that is um, curious to me right now is how to wire the batteries one inside the other. But I could maybe wire them. Maybe and that then floor. We could, could both come out. lift them up at the same time and set them in. Okay. With the wires already coming out, the cables already coming out that are going to be connected to the inverter. Okay. That's possible. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I could probably do that, and then. Your battery monitoring system could go like right here or something. I put the solar panel up on the roof, got an idea that it's gonna work in the footprint that it's gonna uh, take up. But now I need to move the Z brackets and rather than guess, and maybe even guess mirrored wrong, and I actually did the Z brackets opposite of what I wanted. I just went up there with a, put it down, took a Sharpie, marked the spots where it's, they're gonna go and now we're gonna put them there. Because as you can see, as a mirror on the other side, the, for us to get this to work with the skylight and the fan, it's gotta overhang about three inches. And that doesn't bother me. If it was a hangover much more than that, it might, but that doesn't bother me. But, and it may, also makes it work if you wanna put that skylight you talked about in later in the back. And those two are gonna go on the end. And it's coming out real nice. I'm using two of the stock Renogy self-tapping screws after I put the butyl tape down and then I'm coming back in the middle and putting another self-tapping screw in the middle just as a little bit of extra and then you always got to remember that you've got your butyl tape that acts as a little bit of an adhesive not much to really count on and the Dicor also I drown my Z brackets in Dicor I don't just put it right over the penetration points and so it spreads out over that and creates a bond that I've removed them from RVs after it's dried, sat in the sun for years. And you can't just put, pick them up once you take the screws out. You have to get in with a putty knife and your uh, cutter and cut around them. So this is gonna act as a very strong bonding agent as are the self-tapping screws. Aaron, who I'm doing this install for, is a digital nomad who actually directs commercials from the road and you'll notice in most of my videos I'm either holding the camera myself or it's on a tripod and there's a very good chance if you go back and look at some of my older videos where I'm moving around and the camera's moving around it's Aaron holding the camera the times that we link up and travel together but what happened was I don't know if I've said this before she 
busted up her camper. She had a sliding camper on her four-wheel drive truck, and it was kind of on the old side, kind of on the feeble side, and she busted it up, but she had a substantial solar system in it that she had to harvest. It wasn't gonna go with the camper. She found a new camper in very short order, drove down to Tucson and did that, and we were able to get everything off of the old camper last night. Now we're putting it into the new camper, still kind of figuring out a little bit of the details, but what it is, is it's a 100, two 175 watt panels. They're probably Chinese panels, I'm guessing, putting out a little over nine amps, 23 volts on the VOC. VOC stands for uh, open voltage open current, which means if there's no resistance at all, that's what they put out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wire these in series. I'm kind of a big series guy and I probably should switch over to parallel, but the deal with the series is it's gonna double the amps and the voltages remain the same. She's got a Victron, uh, I think it's a 150 solar controller, MPPT solar controller with the Bluetooth enabled, which means I don't wanna lose you in all this stuff, but what it is is the Victron solar controller has an app you download and you can interact with your solar controller and know what kind of power it's putting out by visiting the app. It Bluetooths over to the solar controller and the solar controller tells it what watts you're putting out right now, what amps you're putting out right now, and whether or not your batteries are floating. Uh, if you buy the Victron solar controller from Battleborn, they will configure it for you in-house because every solar controller, MPBT, that's you know worth its salt needs to be calibrated and they do that there at Battleborn and we're putting in two Battleborn 100 amp hour batteries, 12 volt, 100 amp. We're gonna wire them up in parallel because we do not want uh, 24 volts running through the system. We want it to be 12 volt. And this, uh, these two batteries are gonna feed an inverter. Let's go take a look. This is a, probably about the biggest inverter you're ever gonna see in your life. Usually if you're putting one in a RV or a uh, van, a box truck, schoolie, something that wasn't built from the factory to be lived in, you're not gonna need a 6,000 watt inverter. And, and, and Aaron doesn't need a 6,000 watt inverter, but a friend had one that he was replacing with something that suited his needs a little bit better and was in the position of offering it to her for a very good price. And so it made sense for her to get it at the time. This inverter is uh, smart enough that it doesn't run the fan all the time. If you go down and get a cheap, uh, modified sine wave inverter sometimes the fans will always be running because they don't have a switch in them that that uh, denotes how hot it is and when to switch on this one does have that in it it's a pure sine wave inverter and she could easily run a commercial grade uh vitamix with this inverter but this is what the two batteries in the solar are going to power and then from this i'm not saying you should do this but what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a power cord that we're gonna plug into this. I'm gonna switch the plug over to a 110 plug. We just bought this at Home Depot. I'm gonna cut that off, put a 110 plug in it, and we're gonna uh, occupy one of these outlets with this plug, which is then going to go into the pre-wiring of our system. And I think we're only looking at two outlets, so it's not gonna be that big of a deal. But that's a way that you can take a inverter that's not rated as an inverter charger with the 110 coming off of it and make it that way. For the record, I'm saying don't do that. But that's what we're gonna do in this case. We're also gonna give her an outlet that has 3.6 amp outputs. Most of the time when you see a USB output, it's not 3.6 amps output. So this is gonna charge her phone and her handheld electronics very quickly. And so I'm pretty excited about that. I've got two of them. I've got three of them in my bus and I use them all the time. So we've got our work cut out for us. So I'm gonna get back to work. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and leave the video here. This wasn't really intended to be a, a solar install video anyway. I just haven't had anything out in about three weeks, three and a half weeks. And so I wanted to at least touch base with you, let you know we're still up here. We're wrapping up this solar for Aaron. Uh, I'm not taking solar jobs, but the reason that I took this one is she busted up her camper and I had to go get the old stuff off and put the put it on this camper so she could have power because she has a job out 
in the ether and needs to have an internet connection and power and all the things we need power for. So I'm gonna bust this out over the next couple of days and then I have a pile of uh, footage to edit on the Battleborn install that I did and some other stuff too. So I just wanted to touch base with you and let you know what's been going on. I hope you're having a good summer and not taking anything too seriously, including yourself. See you on the next upload.